on the planet. WBND. WBND. WBND Radio. Home of the Brothers and the Man Radio Show. This is gospel music 24 7. That's not right now. The opinions expressed in this show do not reflect the views of WBND mm-hmm. Studios okay. or any associated affiliates. Coming to you from a biblical perspective, we are hoping and praying that we can help you to know God and to know Jesus in a more intimate way. You are listening to the Tabernacle Trinity Hall Show. WBND Radio. Radio. Welcome to WBND Radio. 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 Tabernacle Trinity Hall. WBND Radio. Listen. Every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Tune in every Monday. Tabernacle Trinity Hall Show. Every Monday, 6.30 p.m. Saints, welcome to the WBND Radio, the number one internet radio on the planet. You're here with us at Tabernacle Trinity Hall Show. We have your host, James and Pamela Harold, and our producer, Moses. You like the color blue. Amen. Praise the Lord, Saints, and hello to you guys as well. Your introduction is now. Amen. Those who are watching, those who are listening, amen. God is an awesome God. We love him because of who he is, amen. Amen. God is a good God. This is a wonderful day. I'm so blessed today. I don't know. I'm just blessed. I'm just like in the awe of God. I'm, you know, there's no better place to be than to be in the awe of God, amen. Amen. You come in here, everybody was so full. Everybody all, everybody had, had something exciting to tell, and we just had to sit back and let them empty themselves, amen. Mm-hmm. Hey man, God is an awesome God. How have your day been? My day was good. It went by pretty fast. Before I know it, it was four thirty. Hey man, fast day. A good day. A, day. a, good day. Day. How a about busy day is a good day for you. Hey mm-hmm. man. Oh, hey man. Me, I had a great day. I got to change the shocks on the um, Jeep. I did that. I had did two jobs today and everything, and I was pondering on God. What do you want us to talk about today? And also. You know, he was speaking with me as I was working on the Jeep, got all that behind me, fixing Congrats. everything. God is an awesome God, just a wonderful God. Moses, how have your day been, sir? My day was amazing, as always. I uh, love, love, love God, love sharing the word. And every time we can be a living epistle to someone else's life, it is always a blessing. A uh, young mother of two uh, was speaking with her today. And somehow with her tight schedule, uh, she couldn't quite make it to a church or even a Bible study. She says it's just so stressful trying to balance life. And I said, well, what if we bring church and Bible study to you? Uh, would that be OK? And she said, you would do that for me? And I said, why not? Absolutely. We would love that. So you pick a day and time that works and we'll we'll bring ministry to to your home and share it with you and your family. And that was a Amen. blessing. That's what we do as family. That's what we do as Christians. That's the love of God. Jesus, Amen. they went to the people. And, you know, Paul even said this, and I agree with it 100%. That we sometimes got to set our suffering aside mm. and we take on the suffering of others. That's right. Sometimes we got to set our suffering aside so that we can take on the suffering of others. Amen. We still have our own to take on, but you know what? The word said to ex- exhort the other to be higher than yourself. Amen. Mm. It said that it's better to give. Then to receive, amen. So those are the things of God, the love that God puts in yeah. our hearts. And it makes it so special because we are all special in Christ. Mm-hmm. We are a warrior priesthood, amen. Mm-hmm. And we shouldn't we shouldn't take love your neighbors as you love yourself. Mm. Who is your neighbors? Wherever you are at that moment. Right now, my neighbors is Brother Moses and Pamela Harrell, amen. amen. They are right now my neighbors. Wherever you are, whoever is around you, if you're driving it in a car, the person in the car next to you, even if they piss you off, made you mad, <laughs> they still your neighbor. The ones in the front, the ones in the back, they're your neighbors. Lift them up in prayer because you are in control of your environment. And that's what we are talking about. We're talking, that's what we are talking about. We're talking about the armor of God. Guys, we are still on that last one, the sword. And we're talking about God is an awesome God. Yes, the power is. of God's word. 
And so there's power in God's word. And that's how come you are in control of your situation. Speak those things that are not as though they are. You know, amen. If that person always in that chair, they recline the chair, he lazy, he's a no good for nothing. That's how you're going to be because mm -hmm. that's what you're speaking. But if that person in that chair, oh, no, he ain't always in that chair. He can get up from that chair. He's the most busiest guy I know. And sooner or later, he's going to get up from that chair. Amen. Because mm -hmm. there's power in the word. That's life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen. And so we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be talking about the power of God's word. We talked about the armor of God. We talked about the belt. This is truth. We talk about the breastplate, righteousness. We talk about the foot gear, readiness to spread the gospel, the exhortation, being exhorted in the word. We talk about the shield, which is faith. We know that faith is in our hearts and hope is in our minds. Amen. And that's how it should be. The hammock, which protects our minds from salvation. It protects our salvation. It don't protect us from salvation, but it protects us from losing our salvation. Amen. Amen. But it protects us from the snares of Satan that he's throwing against us. This is the armor of God. This is what the armor of God do. It protects us from the, the discouragements of Satan, from the evidence of Satan, from the tries of Satan, from the dotting of Satan, from the enemy, the Satan, the devil. Amen. I wonder and why we take this for granted. What the Bible? I wonder why this is his word. That's his word. I wonder why we take it for granted. Yeah, and, we, and that's what we're going to do until we get in the word and until we subject ourselves to the word. And even us who subject ourselves to the word sometimes take it for granted simply because we are in the flesh, which is weak. And we do have things coming against us. We do have a sinful nature. But it is in Christ that washes us and make that sinful, that old man, we put it off. It doesn't mean that he doesn't flare up every once in a while because you can put something down and pick it up. But they say let go and let God and leave that thing alone. Don't go back and messing with that thing again because what you do, you will rejuvenate it. You know, um, every year I do my yard. And at the end of the year, I aerate my yard. I put holes in the ground. I put seeds and fertilizer. Mm -hmm. I'm feeding it. I'm nourishing the ground. The garden. That we talk about yeah. the, the preparation. We talk about the uh, this, the sore. And back during that time, people understood what it meant. But people back that time thought of a farmer that throws seeds all over the place to be a stupid farmer. That's because they knew that an experienced farmer would not do that. They knew that an experienced farmer would go out in the field and get the rocks out of the way, get the stones out of the way, get the reeds up and everything before they turn that ground and before they begin to cultivate that ground and then put the seeds and things in it. But what God, what Jesus is talking about, as far as that he said it because he knew they would understand where he was coming from. But the word is for everybody. Amen. See, that's the great commission for us to go out teaching the word, preaching the word, baptizing people in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, showing them how to obey the word of God, showing them how to apply the word of God to the Jews first and then to the Greeks. It's for everybody. For God loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son that so whoever believes shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God is an awesome God. So God's made the world and everything in and including us by his word. By his word. By his word. And Amen. this is his word. And I want this because he is speaking his word through the writings of people like mm -hmm. us. That maybe that's why it's not as easy to accept it because they don't see him like the Israelites did to really hear his word because it wasn't written then. So they heard it speak. And they, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they did. They, they truly did. And that's why he told Thomas that in our days that we should have even greater works mm -hmm. because we do not see. We do not get to touch. Right. We don't see and we can't touch and yet we still believe. Mm -hmm. But it's the spirit of God right. that's in us that even the Christ, I will put it as even a baby can understand the word of God. Mm -hmm. But those that are not touched by God, they can't understand the word of God. 
And so as you come in as a baby in Christ, because guess what? You're not coming in unless you believe. And you can't believe unless somebody is witnessing Jesus to you. So see, and, and that person can't witness to you unless they are sent. You can't preach without being sent. For faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word. And the word comes by... You got to be sent. Mm -hmm. You got to be sent. And here's the thing. I can't make you know God. I can tell you about mm -hmm. God. But it's up to God to introduce himself to you. Mm -hmm. and he does that through the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Yeah. And when you read God's word, um, to Pam's point, you're actually receiving him because he lives in his word and the bible talks about in the beginning was the word and the word was god and the word was with god and the word was god so when we look at the word of god we 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 know that the word established something when god Amen. spoke the earth moved and the word established what we live here on earth he also established the kingdom at the same time. So he spoke the world into existence. And what we are living right now is the true word of the oh, living God. God. And we're working it out as we speak. We are in a rehearsal. Mm. Basic instructions mm. before leaving earth. Mm -hmm. Which spells Babel. And that's why we are doing it now. Because Jesus is without spot. Yes. Is without blemish. And God, who knew us before the creation of the world, called us to also be ye holy as he is holy, to be without spot, to be without blemish. Mm -hmm. Wherever the head is, the body shall follow. And Amen? it has to line up. See, that's the thing. When, when we look at the authority of God, um, sometimes we don't want to submit to that. Sometimes we want to act out our own. Sometimes we want to act out on our on our on our on our own power. And that that becomes a rebellious spirit. But the word of God, it pricks us in our heart. And when we apply that word in our heart, our heart begins to to move to your point and, and cultivate and marinate, which opens our understanding up to receive the wisdom Amen. of God. Amen. You got you got knowledge. Knowledge won't, makes you want to go and get understanding. Come on, that's good. Understanding makes you want to go and get wisdom. But you can't get wisdom until you get experience. You gotta get it. So understanding gives you the mind to go and get that experience. And once you have that experience, then you have that wisdom to let you know when, where, and how to apply that knowledge mm. in the same concepts. It's called deductive reasoning. It's like having a ball. You get a ball, you first you roll on it, the kids, they roll on it back and forth. But they don't have no idea that this ball is round. They don't have no idea that this ball can bounce. And then that ball hits something and they see it bounce one mm. time. Now they're learning, oh, this, this thing can bounce. So now they're learning how to bounce that ball. They're learning how to bounce that ball. Now they're on the hill, they see the ball rolling down the hill. Hey, that thing going down the hill, how come? And they come ask questions, why, why? Why? And a lot of times we are tell a kid because I say so. Mm. But you know, if you explain to that kid why, but then you wouldn't have to spend so many times telling that kid not to do something or to do something because now they begin to understand why mommy and daddy is saying not or why mommy and daddy is saying to. But is there ever a time where a parent should say, you know what, you're not ready to receive that right now or should we give them the benefit of the doubt and speak into them so that way they can at least hear it and come to an understanding? Which which one is better? Well, see, my point is that we, even as adults, mm -hmm. being children of God, mm. that we have those same, same questions. tendencies. Mm -hmm. And what do we do? We plant seeds mm -hmm. and we water the seed. But it's God who causes it to grow. Mm. So even if we don't think that they are ready, we still should share with them because here's the thing, they was ready to ask the question. So if they're ready to ask the question, but then we should be ready to give them an answer mm -hmm. because the words say to be ready to give an answer Absolutely. always. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. God knows our hearts because of the Holy Spirit that who know even the deepest secrets of God, the deep, mm -hmm. deepest thought of God. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. God, he takes us through 
activities, trials and tribulations, so that we can get to the point to where now I understand. Mm -hmm. So see, here's the thing. That's why we have first grade through 12th grade, okay? So a kid come, the kid might not be ready for the meaty part of the answer. Like Paul was saying, you guys should desire uh, you should be ready for the meat, but you're desiring milk, is mm -hmm. what he was saying. So what we should do is discern. We should discern by the Spirit, because the Spirit knows all things. And so what we do, we build a person up. We learn from faith to faith. Mm -hmm. The things of God, the heavenly things are revealed to us from faith, by faith to faith. Amen. So what we have to do walking in the Lord is to trust on Him like what uh, Moses said that we can't lean towards our own understanding and God is not going to give us something that we are not ready for we're not going to give a child something they're not ready for we're mm -hmm. not going to give a baby a piece of bread to eat when they're still drinking milk we're not going to give a, a kid who just learned how to eat a piece of cornbread when we can give them a piece of white bread because we are preparing them in steps. So we learn from steps upon steps, concepts upon concepts. We learn and it's redundant. Learning is redundant. Amen. Mm -hmm. And y'all, that's why we've been spending so much time on the armor of God. What we're going to try and do, we're going to try and bring the whole armor into focus. We're going to try and bring the whole armor into action is what we're going to spend time doing today. Why? Because the Lord put on my mind that a lot of fear mm -hmm. is in people. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to use this storm that's coming, Florence, the storm, Hurricane Florence that is coming. You see a lot of people in the stores and things getting all kind of stuff because of fear. But even when we do go to the store, we still have to be wise in the things that we buy. A lot of people buying meat and stuff. But if your electricity go out, your meat will spoil. So you want to focus on like bad goods and canned goods and things, you know, of that sort. Amen. So, but what we're going to talk about is the power of God's word. Because the last armor, the last equipment in the armor of God is the sword, which is the spirit. The word of God. And there's power of God's word. There's power in God's word. There's power of God's word. Amen. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to go to the scriptures. And at the end, we're going to do a prayer. And we might even pray through this. So guys, as we talk through different things and if you have something that you like for us to lift up in prayer, and if even if you are ashamed to put it there, just put me. God knows what he knows your heart. The spirit knows what it is. And if you're not ashamed of it, just write what it is. Amen. Uh, from milk to meat is what Brother Anthony said. Amen. That's what we do. We go from milk to meat. And you know, we 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 give the seed, we water the seed, but it's not our responsibility to grow that thing. Yeah, you know, some things we can do on our own, guys, but some things come by prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just have to learn what those things are. Moses said something earlier, and he took my mind to, that's why, he, oh yeah, on, on application, submission. The word say to study to show yourself approved. So you study to show yourself approved, and then it says something after that. The workman needeth not to be ashamed. So now you're studying, but now you're applying the word. That's the two things that is for us to do, that we are called to do. That's the two things, and what the result of that is, is that we would not be put to shame. But let those be put to shame that intentionally sin, and not those who do not intentionally sin. Because we all are not perfect. Right, and God knows what everybody's dealing with. He, he knows exactly, he knew what Saul was. He knew what David was. And, and I, I look at our walk with Christ and I realize that God wants us to be real with him because he already know us. He created us, he know the beginning and the end. He want us to. And it bring me back to a sermon that I heard 
in the Garden of Eden because all of this started there. That when God asked um, Adam, where are you? He, 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 he presented it for him to be honest, mm -hmm. to be open to him. Mm. But he chose not to. And then that's how it, it kept on going kept with going. who told you. But that's what he wanted him to do was to be honest with him. Because he already knew. And here's the thing. God knows our hearts that even he when does. your own heart convict you, you, know that God is greater than your heart. Right. That's, and he loves you. Amen. That's why we talk about the honor of God because it protects you from doubt is what it does. Mm -hmm. And see, here's the thing. Before you can be honest with God, you got to learn how to be real with yourself. Amen. Because, see, before we can go to God, we got to confess that we are sinners. Yes, yeah. And we got to confess the blood of Jesus, the Son of God, the one who saves. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Uh, Jesus saved. Um, that's, 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 that's what he does. Emmanuel, Jesus saved. Mm -hmm. And so we got to learn how to be real with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're having this thing. Because see, the sword reveals, the word of God reveals what we are outside of Christ. Mm -hmm. And what we are outside of Christ is wicked, evil, sinners, and not worthy of God's glory. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you guys can read this. You got a pen and pencil? I'll give you 10 seconds. Eight. I was going to say, to Go that ahead. point, while, the, while they're getting their pens Go and ahead. paper, when you say that, some people say, well, that, that's not me. That don't sound like me. I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Amen. Amen. And like we say, you have to come to realize yourself first and recognize that you are a sinner. We are all sinners, amen. All sure. We are all sinners. Not one of us can save ourselves. I don't care how good we think. We are. Not even Mother Teresa was able to save herself with all the great good that she did. She couldn't save herself. Stephen, the, uh, the apostles of God, the prophets, no matter how good they were, they could not save themselves. It took Jesus in order for us to have salvation, a reincarnated Christ, Jesus Christ, been born in the flesh. God been born in the flesh, the Son of Man, the Son of God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The scriptures to write down for this, Genesis 6 and 5, Genesis 8, 21, Romans 3, 23. We are all wicked. We all fall short of the glory of of God. Amen. And these are just some scriptures that we are giving that the sword reveals what we are outside of Christ. Now how do we judge if we are not currently in God's will? Well, we're going to talk about that the next show. How do we judge huh, if we are not currently in God's will? And that's what we're going to talk about the next time and then we're going to talk about how do we judge if we are walking by God's will. Amen. So we're going to take it from that. We're just trying to get back on track with things because last week was a holiday. Happy holiday. Belated holidays to everybody out there. Everybody who's watching. School everybody who's listening. Everybody last yeah. Week, yeah. You know. School. Happy. We're going to lift up the kids in prayer and everything. We're going to skip on over. Because we want to bring the armor of God into focus. And that's what we're doing now. We're bringing it into focus. We're bringing it into action. I want to ask Pam if she would uh, turn to Mark 11, 23 right fast. I'm going to mm -hmm. ask Brother Moses okay. if he can turn to Mark 16, verses 17 and 18 right fast. Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. What we are talking about, we are talking about the power. We are talking about the power of God's word is what we are talking about, guys. The power of God's word. And we are going to talk about it because we are going to do something with what we are doing. We are learning what the word is so that we know what our power is in God, in Christ. And while they are getting that, I want to read Mark 16, uh, 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 Mark 16 verses 17 and 18. For Moses, and I'm going to read First Corinthians, 
chapter 1, verse 13. 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 13 is what I want to read. I'm sorry, verse 31. Verse 31. Who's first? I go first. I go first. The first thing I say, therefore, as it is written, let him who boast, boast in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So that's what we're going to do. We're boasting in the Lord. We are bragging so much in God that we're going to stand firmly against the flares of Satan is what we're going to do. If we're going to be a fool, we're going to be a fool for God. If we're going to be brave, we're going to be brave for God. If we're going to be boasting, we're going to boast for God. Whatever we do, we do for God. Amen. Go ahead, pal. Read yours, baby. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. That's the word of God. That's God's word saying that you can do things in the name of Jesus as long as you believe. It say whoever say this and whoever believe that it shall be done. Now we got to keep in mind here that we're talking to people who is under the word of God. We got to keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Amen. Because see the things that we ask of God. Is yea and amen. Amen. The things that we ask of God. Is yea and amen. But we have to believe. That's the word of God. So hold to that you guys. Hold to that. Go ahead Moses. And these signs shall accompany them that believe. In my name shall they cast out demons, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall in no wise hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. Now, pal, go to Ephesians 1, verse 21 and 23, and Moses, you can read and Moses, you're going to go to James verse um, chapter 4, verse 17. But now, Moses was reading. Ephesians 1, verse 1. Ephesians 1, verse 21, 22, 23. Okay. Moses, you're going to do James 4, 17. I'm going to do 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. Now, what Moses, to what he was reading, is that we've been in Christ, that whatever we ask, the word is telling us we can lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. It said that we can cast out curses, demons, in the name of Jesus. It said we can lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus and they'll be healed. It said that we can drink poison in the name of Jesus and it will not harm us. Now also keep this in mind, saints, that it's not for us to test God. Mm -hmm. God is not for us to play with. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But we are to live by every word of God. So if you happen to get into a situation Know this. Know that, you know, you know, in the name of Jesus, whatever that is, it will not harm me. You know, you somebody sick, your children, your mother, your father, whatever. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Uh, somebody cursed, demon possessed. In the name of Jesus, this right now, this what's going on in the air, this chaotic, this confused, confusing moment. I rebuke in the name of Jesus. Whatever is in you that argumental spirit, I rebuke in the name of Jesus. And guess what? Some things we have to take to our secret place and pray to God with. Amen. Amen. So what we are doing, we are learning how to bring the armor of God into focus because we are believing. Remember, we are believing what God say that we can do. Go ahead, Pam, read your Ephesians 1, 21, 23. Uh, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him 
to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Jesus' name is above every name in heaven and on earth. Jesus' name is above every name in this world and the world to come. Amen. Jesus sits, God put him on his right hand side in heaven places, plural, is where he sit. And so we use and do and know everything in the name of Jesus. So if God were to say that we could put on the armor of God and that the armor of God protects us, then that's what we believe. Amen. If God were to say that Jesus' name is above every name, then that's your credit card. That's better than gold. Amen. 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 Uh, the disciples was walking and it was going through the gate called what? Beautiful. And the man was sitting down and he wanted some money. And they said, money, silver, and gold, I have none. They said, but this is what I have. And told him to get up, take his bed, and walk in what? The name of Jesus of Nazareth is what he did. Amen. Moses, read yours. Um, let's see. James 4, 17. To him, therefore, that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Amen. That's James 4, 17. Yes. Praise God. James 4, 17. And, 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 and that's the word of God. That's what we was talking about. Knowing who you are. Knowing who you are. I, what I had in mind was uh, it, the word said, resist the, the devil, devil he shall and he from shall you. flee from you. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do, because that's the word of God, then we have to do what for the devil to flee from us? Resist. Resist. Some things causes us to imply an action before God's word can reveal itself and prosper because God's word does not return to him empty and void. So we got to believe and we got to resist. Amen. Amen. And so with that being said, guys, I think we read enough scriptures. Amen. God is awesome, God. No weapon form against us shall prosper. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else shall fall in place. So that's what we're doing with the armor of God. We are learning how not to doubt who we are. Know that even when your heart convict you, that God is greater than your heart. Whatever it is that you have something to pray for, y'all just pray with us and just say amen, say yes, make some kind of comment or do something so we can know that you are out there, that we are not out here by ourselves. We know that we are not out here by ourselves, but what we're trying to do, we want you to feel like you are a part of this because you are, guys. We give you opportunities to answer questions and everything, but we just can't sit here and Because we're not getting anything done. Amen. Amen. But we want you to be a part of this. We want to listen to you. We want to put you on the telephone. We want to hear what you have to say. Amen. We want to read what you're saying. Amen. Amen. God is awesome, God. Let us bow. Let us pray. Because of the word of God, we know that we can bind all things in the name of Jesus. We bind the hurricane Florence. We bind you, we rebuke you, we send you back to the waters that which you come from, and that you would dispensate, that you would, what's the word I'm looking for? Dissolve, that you would just stop in the name of Jesus. We bind you from setting your feet upon the land of North Carolina or the land of any of our sister or brother and neighbors, which is Georgia or Virginia. We believe this in the name of Jesus we know that God that what is of God shall come to pass in the name of Jesus and he said that whatever we pray ask and say and believe in his name it shall come to pass we right now lifting up our children in prayer God that you will protect them that no weapon form against them shall prosper the teachers that no weapon form against them shall prosper the students that no weapons form against them that shall prosper the staff that no weapon form against them shall prosper the principals that no weapon form against them shall prosper the assistants 
consistent principle that no weapon form against them shall prosper. The school board, that no weapon form against them shall prosper. The bus drivers, that no weapon form against them shall prosper. We claim this in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh dear God, just lift us up right now in the name of Jesus. We come against illness. We come against sicknesses in the name of Jesus. We come against doubt in the name of Jesus. God, we ask you for those who are seeking to know you and to understand you, to put a boundary around them and to protect them long enough, dear God, that they can get rooted in the word of God that Satan can't come and steal the word of God before it gets rooted in their hearts because once it's rooted there's no stealing because Jesus you said that you have lost none that whoever the Father have gave you that you kept that no one can snatch us from your hands and so we're standing on the word of God by the word that we read by the word that we understand by what the word tells us to do which is to believe and to resist Satan and so we do this right now in Jesus name hallelujah and we ask you to join us next Monday at 6 30 here Tabernacle Trinity Hall, the show on WBNDRadio.com, the number one internet radio in the world, where our favorite letter, the B is, where we can say to you that you, you are, are so beautiful. beautiful. God bless. Don't tell your neighbor. You're listening to the number one internet radio station on the planet. WBND. 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 Home of the Brothers and the Man Radio Show. This is Gospel Music 24-7. We come to worship Christ.